Hey guys, it's Julius from Rational Fanboy, here to talk about the Star Wars Rogue One trailer, and I'm here with Bryce Reeve from Cool Stuff Collector. So Bryce, why don't you start the trailer off, and we can point out the weapons and equipment that we see in this trailer. Okay, so right off the bat, um, on the left there we have a Rebel Marine, we want yeah, to call Yeah, it's it. what um, we see in uh, Star Wars A New Hope on the Tainted Forge ship, um, where they aren't officially listed as... Uh, canon as, as yeah. Marines, but yeah. if we think back to like Star Wars Battlefront Two. Um, when you're in space and you're not a pilot, you're one of those guys and they're Marines. So I guess we could infer that. Yeah, and they seem to be armed with the uh, DH-17 rifles and variations of that instead of the A2ADC uh, that we see the uh, infantry equipped with. Moving forward, uh, we see the standard Yavin 4. Classic X-Wing. Yeah. This is definitely the Yavin Temple. So there, first shot of Diego Luna. He's got a little thing on his jacket and that is supposedly the uh rebel captain insignia makes sense so he very well could be the person that like recruited Jin. definitely not somebody that was running around on the yeah and if if ensuing. we're led to believe that this is when she first joins a rebellion then i'd assume he's gonna be the uh, captain or the squad leader of the team so right here stormtroopers classic e11 and a T-21, interesting because a lot of people think that Stormtroopers only had E-11s, but actually this was before that they were conscripted to every Stormtrooper. Yeah, and it, you especially see that in A New Hope. I mean, this takes place, of course, even before that. And I think a lot of the Stormtroopers were getting equipped different rifles. Because as we see, like in Empire Strikes Back and Re Return of the Jedi, they all seem to have the E-11. So this is probably before it was standardized upon like every troop. This is a really cool shot. This seems to be like what Gareth Edwards is trying to do to make it a war movie. It looks like she's like in the back of a troop transport. Yeah, or that'd be really cool, especially um, if the rebels had something like that, a uh, yeah. like a ground vehicle, because the rebels really have no land vehicle in Star Wars canon. So it'd be yeah. really cool if they introduced that. At first glance, I thought this was a different type of Star Destroyer than what we usually see, but it's just a Star Destroyer first class. But these are the same Star Destroyers we see in Rebels. I think the main difference is the array on top of the bridge. It's like a, a lattice work, like an X-frame, where it's just one supported piece on the class twos that we see in the movie. Yeah, we assume those are something for communication. So on the right over here, looks like a DH-17 from Star Wars Battlefront and from uh, New Hope and like a silver scope and looks like the barrel is a little bit longer. After like looking at a whole bunch of different blasters, it doesn't really seem to be anything Yeah, else. it's not something that we've seen. What's well, something interesting that plays into it is that if you read uh, Battlefront Twilight Company, when Namir gets issued the A280 at Hoth, he seems like that's like the high class weapon. Like he's never had that before. So yeah. I definitely think like the DH-17s or whatever the variation of it is, is what average rebel trooper is uh, issued. I mean, we see them in episode five on Hoth, which I already mentioned, but we also see them in Return of the Jedi with troops on Endor. And those were like elite troops, the Pathfinders. So mm -hmm. I'd assume that maybe just the average rebel trooper has just issued a variation of this rifle. This guy in the middle, he looks to be carrying maybe the same gun. It's got the same silver front end or gray front end. It looks like it has like an AR-15 retractable stock on like the back. But yeah, so this could just be an entirely new gun based off the AR-15, which we actually haven't seen in Star Wars yet, mm -hmm. oddly enough. So here we have our, what is he, Grand Admiral? It look, well, he has um, the Admiral uh, rankings, but he is dressed like we've seen a Grand Admiral dressed like. The possibilities of him, what he actually is, is a Admiral, Grand Admiral, or some sort of association with the ISB, which is the Imperial Security Bureau, which we don't really know much about outside of Rebels and lots of the new canon books. This is my favorite shot in the entire trailer. Yeah. It's like a really cool Nazi occupation type thing. It just shows like how scary the Empire is up close and personal, like roaming through streets like that. Yeah, we we see. Um, I mean, we see the tank. We see the tank crew. If that's not a third trooper popping out on the side, we see two people in the tank, uh, which looks like the driver, and then the commander on the top wearing like tank trooper gear, which looks completely different from anything else we've seen before. But yeah, and that tank that they're in, definitely not anything we've seen in canon so far. But it kind of looks like like a Panzer tank mm -hmm. <laughs> with guns on the side. Definitely like a callback. Could but... be a, a, the callback to uh, the IFT that was used in the Clone Wars. That I don't know if it was officially introduced in canon yet, but we saw in like front in lots of the games yeah yeah definitely that that's probably what it's modeled after i would guess so forrest whitaker from what i've heard he's supposed to be some sort of like battle hardened veteran supposedly like he needs this suit to support himself kind of like darth vader but he does have a rebreather it looks it looks like when luke takes off darth vader's mask at the end of return of the jedi it's the same idea right below his jaw there but other than that we don't really know anything about yeah him. it's a, just our best guess it's at this point 
So this shot, probably second favorite shot in the whole thing. As cool as it is, it's more than anything else. We don't know what these troopers are called, who they're attached with, if they're for a special unit. Um, I mean, they obviously are, but we don't know really what their purpose is other than speculating that maybe they're the guys who are sent after the uh, Jin's team, like looking after them, kind of like their special forces. Yeah, they, they definitely have to be some sort of special forces because we didn't see them in the other movies and they're also designed like Darth Vader. So I would assume like the higher ups get a cooler design. Something like that. And yeah, his gun, we can't really tell what that is. If anything, it looks like the stock of a DLT-19, and has a little scope on it, so it could be that awful gun from Battlefront, the DLT-19X, but who knows? Maybe he's good Yeah, it's it. definitely a different gun from the uh, from the next scene that we see them in uh, when they're firing. Um, so this scene, nothing really new here, just like Prisoners of War, I guess, bloodied, which is crazy. Definitely not a Star Wars thing to see, like, our good guys bloodied up like yeah, that. Yeah, it's much darker. So this shot, there's something in Jin's hand, in her right hand. It looks like some sort of case. Maybe that's the actual yeah, Death the Star Yeah, the literal Death Star plans <laughs> that they picked up. The literal plans. Yeah. I mean, those are the Scarab um, Troopers you're talking about. Scarab Troopers, Desert Troopers, whatever they're calling them. They um, look to be carrying different different like, guns than the uh, standard yeah. Scarab Troopers. Yeah, def definitely look um, like they're based off the AR-15 uh, platform. Yeah, they look like they have an M16 full stock. So maybe they'd introduce two weapons based off the AR in this movie, as they did with A New Hope. They had the E-11 and the DH-17, both based off of the um, Sterling submachine gun. Yeah, the Sterling gun. submachine gun. Um, I mean, they like to yeah. do that. The DL-44 is based off the C-96. So they like to base the weapons off of stuff we see in real life. So it kind of gives that realistic yeah. tone. This shot... It's just cool. I don't know if there's um, too much you can pick out... About yeah, it. not much to pick out. In the background, we see a crashed X-Wing, and we see two guys in red over there, so maybe this guy isn't part of the whole Rebel squad we've seen. Another awesome shot. Um, no idea what those stormtroopers are carrying. And, you know, the most interesting thing is, like, outside of their weapons or their armors, like, they're holding it much more tactically than you see any other stormtrooper. Like, whenever they're shooting it, they're shooting from the hip, made it raised mm -hmm. up, but, like, these guys seem like they're really trained. I mean, they have to be some variation of the uh, dark troopers or um, just some sort of elite stormtrooper unit. This ship, definitely something new. Never seen anything like that, at least um, with the Imperials. But it does kind of look like the Trade Federation droid dropships that we see a lot in the Clone Wars and in Episode 1. That could just be like some yeah. later variation. Yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a variation of it, but it's very plausible that the Imperials took some sort of design concepts that the Federation was using in the Clone Wars and kind of evolved that design. Or if it's not an Imperial thing, it could just be some sort of repurposed Rebel yeah, completely. craft. Yeah, it, it could completely be the case. Um, so that looks like a variation of the Pulse Cannon or the DLT-20A. Um, looks a little different. Though. Yeah, it looks like the yeah the part just above the uh, finger guard, um, the main like chassis of the, of the weapon, definitely seems to be a tiny bit different from what we see in the DLT-20A, but it's definitely some sort of variation of it. Yeah, and it's got like a, another AR-15 Q. Um, looks like a SOCOM stock on an M4 or something. So maybe this is that new gun, and they just made it look a lot like yeah. the guns we already see in Star Wars. Here, this is interesting, because a lot of people thought, and me included, I didn't think that the Emperor would be in this, and this kind of gives it away. Nowhere in canon do we really have any mention that the Imperial Guards go anywhere that Emperor Palpatine isn't. So this could very well just switch yeah, it up, the, but from what we have to understand, like this is probably Emperor Palpatine's office. <laughs> Of, of some uh, of some variation. And another thing to point out is this kind of does have this circular design to it that like it kind of resembles Darth Vader's chamber. Another idea is that those royal guards, they also guard Palpatine's stuff um, because in, in the Lando comic, they uh, are on Palpatine's yacht. So they could be guarding something close to Palpatine, like the Death Star plans, but who knows? This is all wild speculation. Yeah. So there's Forrest again. We can see his, maybe his rebreather, maybe harmonica. <laughs> um so this guy looks like he's got a tank of flame or something like on that. His back. Um, it looks like his, I mean, his weapon has that red coloring to it as well. So it could be like a flamethrower type of thing or like a laser variation. I have no idea what to anticipate from this, but it's definitely something that we haven't seen anywhere in the Star Wars universe thus far. Yeah, guns completely different than anything. Doesn't even look to be based off of anything from real life either. And then we see Jin holding what looks to be that same uh, disc rectangle yeah, that she yeah, was holding that disc. she was holding in uh, what we thought was a Death Star. So this could be a scene directly afterwards. Yeah, and these AT-ATs definitely different than what we've seen in the movies. And I thought that they'd be the same ones that we see in um, in Rebels, but they're actually not. They're a lot shorter in the back, and the ones in Rebels don't have that yellow panel on the side. So maybe these are a different variation or just the prototype. Like yeah, who these knows? could just uh, these cool, could though. just be a variation for different climates. Like this could be the forest or. Tropical variation of it, or just an earlier variant yep. of it. 
the final scene we see her in, it looks a tiny bit different from the Imperial flight suits that we've seen people wear before, especially just in the back part. But this has to just be some variation of the uh, TIE fighter yeah. flight suit. What she's wearing looks a bit like what Agent Callus wears. Because he doesn't wear anything on his shoulders. He just has a chest plate. That's interesting. Like I just said. Look yeah, we that. don't see anything on his back. So she could be impersonating an ISB officer. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to lean. I, I think that's very possible. Yeah, I'll lean with the TIE fighter, but it could definitely be something else. Um, but that's definitely the last scene that we see in the trailer. But thanks, Bryce, for doing this with me. For more information like this, come back to rationalfanboy.com or youtube.com slash rationalfanboyvids. Make sure to check out Bryce's blog at coolstuffcollective.com. Thanks.